Um, so anyways, when we're looking at this one, um, again, we want to write a proof, right? And so if we're trying to prove these triangles, so far in this class, we talked about side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, and angle, angle, side. That's the only ways we've learned so far to show congruence between two triangles, OK? So we need to look at this. And if we're going to write a statement or a proof, if we're going to prove congruence, we're going to have to make sure we have either all three sides, two sides and an angle, or two angles and a side. Just make sure that when you talk about these two, that your angle or your side are included. That means right in between the other two sides or other two angles. So we write our statement and our reason. Is that seat available? No. Is seats available? OK. No. So first thing we're going to do is write in our givens. We can say that DE is parallel to FG. Why is DE parallel to FG? Because that's given. But what do I know when I have parallel, parallel angles, though? What should I look for? When I have parallel, right. parallel lines, I'm sorry, I should look for? Congruent. I should look for angle relationships automatically. Then I have angle E is congruent to angle G. That's cool, right? Now, so what about my angle relationships? I have two parallel lines, right? Two parallel lines, and I have this transversal. So that tells me that angle is equal to that angle, right? Because Carly, why would you say that angle is equal to that angle? What angle relationship would tell us that? Starts with an alternate. Interior, right? It's not going to be exterior, because exterior would be outside of the parallel lines. Interior, between the parallel lines, and they're on alternating sides of the transversal. So then, Nick, what, how would, what definition would I say that these two angles are equal to each other? Alternate interior as well, right? So now I can say that angle. Um, angle G, D, F. Well, that's not enough space. Actually, you know what? I don't even need to show all of them, but we'll just do one of them. Let's do angle D, F, G. So D to F, G. D to F to G is congruent to F. D to F, F to D, F to D to E. Why are those equal? Because they're alternate interior. Now, you could, do, you could write it for both of those angles, but we don't have to. Because right now, and the other thing is, you guys have, right now we have angle, angle, angle. But do you guys see angle, angle, angle up there as, as a way to prove that you have two triangles are congruent? No. Angle, angle, angle does not work. So we need to figure out what is a side length that is equal. And the most obvious side length that we can say is equal is this line df. The reason why df is equal to df because the reflexive property, or what we like to call it, this the same side. So I can say line df is congruent to line df because they are reflexive, or the same side. All right? Now, since I only proved that D, F, G is congruent to F, D, E, I'm going to kind of erase these, even though we know we could prove them. But now what I want you guys to see is based on these triangles, I can prove congruence by angle, angle, side. Angle, angle, side. So therefore, I can now write in my homework that triangle D, F, G is congruent to triangle F, D, E. Why are those two triangles congruent? Angle, angle, side. Okay. So now 